Good afternoon or, or good morning to you, uh, depending upon where you are. Uh, this is SK Gauch. I would like to welcome you to our web seminar today. The topic is significant changes in ACI 318-19. In view of the large number of changes, we are doing this seminar in four parts. The first part was uh, day before yesterday. We went through chapters 1 through 15. This is the second part. Uh, we will go through chapter 16 and 17 and the big, very important seismic chapter 18. Uh, this is what 31819 looks like. I talked about the addition of color the last time. Uh, no point in uh, saying that again. The first couple of lines is a repeat, large number of substantive changes. I, I, I really mean that of far, some of them are of far-reaching consequence, which will then require significant learning and adjustment on the part of the practitioner. As I mentioned, part one was done on uh, Tuesday, day before yesterday, November the 3rd. Today is part 2, November the 15th, chapter 16, 17, 18 of ACI 318, 19. Part 3 will be next Tuesday, November the 10th. We will go through chapters 19 through 24. And the last part will be on next Thursday, November the 12th, a week from now. Chapters 25 through 27, which is the last chapter, and then there is a new Appendix A that we'll talk uh, very briefly about. So, Chapter 16 is titled Connection Between Members. ACI 318.14 provisions for restraint forces at bearing connections were given only for cord bills and brackets. 318.19 has added two sections. Uh, the numbers are given 16.223, 16.224 in order to include consideration of restraint forces at all bearing connections, not just brackets and corbels. And confusion in the calculation of the, of the tension due to restraint, N sub UC is, is the notation from the applied shear V sub U uh, was also addressed. There is a little more clarity in how you find your N sub U C, particularly when your member sits on a uh, bearing pad of some kind. So the, this is obviously a, a corbel. This is just to show you the general situation. There is no other significance. This is the shear. This is the restraint tension that we are talking about when a member sits uh, on that uh, uh, corbel, uh, typically on a bearing pad. You will have to deal with that uh, uh, tension. And then there is a moment because the tension and the resistance are eccentric. So the, the short lever arm between the tension and the uh, resisting force in the reinforcement will give you a bending moment. And you will have to design for the shear, the tension, and that bending moment. That, that is typically the situation. Now, in sub UC, this is uh, uh, a reproduction of chapter 12 definition of N sub UC from 318.19. Factored restraint force applied to a bearing connection acting perpendicular, perpendicular to and simultaneously with the shear V sub U to be, so N sub U is to be taken positive when it is a tension force. Now we talked about two sections added, 16223, 16224. This is 16223. 
N sub U for bearing connections. It says when connections, no, connections not on bearing pads. Okay, so those are, I think, relatively rare that you don't use bearing pad that you put, let, let's say, a concrete member directly on a, on a, on a bracket. But, but, but if that's your situation, then it says that tension NUC is calculated simultaneously with the shear V sub U, treating the restraint force as live load. I, I don't know that that tells you how to determine N sub U C, but, but let's not worry about it because, because typically you will have a bearing pad. 